Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, uh, for being here. Um, it's great to see so many familiar faces. Um, and thank you so much to the Loving family for the honor and privilege to be able to stand up here and speak about Philip. Um, really means the world to all of us. My name is Chris Holquist, and I'm joined here today with two lifelong friends, Eric Rates and Matthew Gary. I was lucky enough to meet Phil in kindergarten and start a friendship that continued as, as we grew, grew older. As Phil and I got to middle school, uh, the four of us became inseparable friends. We spent so much time together that we started calling ourselves the ultimate four, and it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Philip was truly the funniest person I've ever met. He always had a special way of making everyone laugh. If I've, as I've tried to narrow down a memory to share, another would come to mind just as funny as the last. In high school, Phil drove a car with a manual transmission, and he was a good driver. But I always laugh when I think about the days after school when Phil would have his windows down, we'd be standing in the parking lot, and we'd say, all right, y'all, you know, I got to go see you. And he'd turn his music up, and he'd go to take off, and he'd make his car jump twice and stall out, <laughs> hit his hands on the, wind, on, the, uh, on the steering wheel, and then turn his car right back on and, and take off quick. <laughs> and just seeing the reaction he would get and knowing that he was doing it on purpose. <laughs> Still makes me laugh to this day. We've shared so many great experiences together for so long that everything reminds me of Phil in some way or another, but I'll always be grateful for that. He was adventurous, competitive, and eager to learn and try new things. He was a natural leader that had the rare gift of making everyone that he met feel loved and special. Saying goodbye to Philip was the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. I will deeply miss my brother Philip, but he will never be forgotten. All right. So as Chris introduced, uh, my name is Matt Gary. <sighs> Love and memories don't die. People do. And while obviously our dear friend left us entirely too soon, we still have the love and memories that will tie us to Philip forever. Phil was a living example of how to be a warrior and how to charge forward despite the challenges ahead. Much like one of, if not his favorite movie characters, the Italian stallion, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Philip embodied that fighting spirit and will to overcome adversity that so very few people have. <laughs> Phil even looked like Rocky enough <laughs> that we try to use a Rocky doll uh, as a decoy to sneak out of Larry and Chris's house in high school one night. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, didn't work. Uh, <laughs> uh, we all know Phil uh, could light up a room and could make anyone laugh in an instant. There's nothing more There's nothing more than I would love to see him one more time. And here is famous greeting. Hey, guy. <laughs> we can learn so much about ourselves and about life in general uh, just by reflecting on our memories that we have of Philip because he exuded every quality of what it means to be a wonderful human being. <laughs> My heart breaks thinking of the void he's left behind, and especially so for the loving family. At the same time, it gives me so much joy to know that Philip was able to meet the love of his life, Kate, and got to experience being a father to, to Darius and Violet, and I know that meant the absolute world to him. While we're all hurting beyond words, I take solace in knowing that his love will continue on in all of us. So I implore you all today, to spread that love in memory of Philip. Laugh a little more, smile a little bigger, and love a little harder. We love you and miss you so much, Stallion. Ultimate Four Forever. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. As Matt and Chris have mentioned, it was really hard to think of just one good story to share. So I decided to encapsulate some of my thoughts into a poem that I prepared for tonight. 
Phil and I met in the fourth grade, and I knew right away we were a perfect match made. He was the class clown, the funniest kid in town. I was more serious and a bit shy. He opened me up. He was my guy. <laughs> we played all the sports, but he hated to run. And he wasn't the best, but he had the most fun. He pushed all the limits. That was his goal. In every good story, he played the star role. We separated for college, but our friendship stayed strong. It would last forever, which I knew all along. When Phil was diagnosed, it hit me like bricks. How could this happen? Not him. Not this. But in the decade that followed, he impressed us all. He saw the adversity and still stood tall. He accomplished so much and lived a great life, which was easier to do when you have a great wife. Kate stood by his side through thick and thin, and there is no doubt she was his biggest win. He earned his masters and started a career, still a life of the party, and enjoyed a good beer. <clears throat> He'd take chemo in the morning, then tackle the day. No complaints, no excuses. That was his way. He started a family and loved being a dad. And we will always make sure Darius and Violet know what a rad dad they had. <laughs> It's been a tough year, a whole lot of sorrow. But as Noel would say, there is always tomorrow. And it's still hard to accept he's not here anymore, but we will always be the ultimate four. So, uh, my name's Chris Kraus, and I will be hearing from Yannick, I think, just after me, but I'm happy to be here to represent a little bit about um, about memories and the life that Phil led when he was in France. Um, Phil and I met studying abroad together in France. Uh, and I, I flew back from Japan uh, a, few, a few days ago. So, okay. Um, so, so back in the France days when I arrived in, in Grenoble and started to settle in to life in a foreign land, I. I never thought I'd end up becoming great friends with, with a goofy American who grew up one state away from me. <laughs> I remember our Canadian friend and the British girls walked up to me in the hall the first day, the first day or two and told me about this hilarious guy from the South who I just had to meet. I wasn't interested. I wanted to be suave and only meet the interesting new European friends, only speak French, and really get immersed in the culture. Immediately after meeting Phil, I realized that wouldn't last too long. <laughs> We hit it off pretty quickly, and we were both making jokes and referencing funny movies and TV shows we grew up with. That really gave me a sense of home, and I felt like I had a brother, just like one of the friends I grew up with, just like the ultimate four. You know, I, I could I could tell what kind of guy Phil was, and and um, and I really bonded with that and, and was drawn to that quickly. Um, so we pretty quickly, I, I was happy he was there and, and that we were in it together. Uh, we had an amazing time that year and made many new friends and some really fun memories together. So some of the some of the key takeaways from the Grenoble adventures. Uh, I don't know who, who all knows what about Phil's time in France, but uh, he was literally the, the king of the social scene amongst <laughs> uh, amongst everyone. Um, there, there was I'm not exaggerating. We, we would go over to his apartment pregame at least three or four times a week. And then you can find him at uh, the, the world-famous London pub, tiny little pub, uh, begging DJ Smile to play more Love Is Gone, and, and mediocre techno tunes. Uh, I th we think he maxed out maybe a few credit cards that year on, on, on the beers for everyone. Uh, aside from the parties, Phil always just wanted people around. He'd always want to, you know, go grocery shopping, cook dinner together, um, and And yeah, it, it always wanted to play soccer or throw frisbee. Uh, we played some golf together there, um, and we went skiing together a lot there, which was one of the most fun 
on things. And Phil's luscious locks flowing behind him with no, with no beanie on, no helmet on, just the goggles and that big, beautiful mullet flowing right behind him. <laughs> he couldn't get enough of it, and, and neither could we, actually. Um, but, but yeah, like everyone knows, he was such a social person, and his spirit was infectious. Um, uh, and, and and whatever whatever we were doing was was genuinely much better when Phil was there. There 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 was a void when when Phil wasn't out. You know, um, fortunately he didn't miss many sessions, so he was pretty much always there. Um, so we got another quick highlight. We we got to spend uh, spend a week together in Morocco. We just found cheap last minute tickets, and it wasn't even like a holiday or break or anything. We just decided to go tell the teachers that we just weren't going to make it that week. They didn't really know how to respond, and we kind of pretended we didn't speak French, <laughs> which, to be fair, you know, our French was a little bit rusty still at that point. So we just went for it and had an amazing, hilarious time time in Morocco. Uh, and seeing Phil's long, pale legs with loafers riding a camel through the Sahara Desert <laughs> is a sight for sore eyes. I've got pictures to prove it, if anyone would like to see. Um, so I also got to know the Phil who was very interested in people on all different levels. Interested in how people organize, how societies and government are structured, what works and what doesn't. Um, Phil was an intellectual, but he didn't take himself too seriously. He could immediately dissolve the serious professional side, uh, joke around and be back to his goofy self pretty quickly. And I really like people like that, and that's a big part of why I love Phil. Uh, I, think, I think Phil always wanted to be on the level of the person he was speaking to. Um, he was very curious and engaged, and he was kind-hearted and interested, and I saw this in all kinds of people that, that he spoke to. Um, he was a lover of people and connection. Uh, we got to hang out a good bit back in the States as well, uh, including times when Phil swore he'd beat me at basketball and golf, and we bet on it, but I never let it happen. But you can be sure he was enjoying it more than anyone was. Um, okay. So la lastly, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, I'll wrap it up. But lastly, so the last time I saw Phil was just over two years ago. Um, and um, it was just after I moved to Japan and my, my dad had a stroke. And I came back to be with him, and he was at Duke, and I just texted Phil to see if he happened to be there. And as fate would have it, Phil and Kate were there, and Phil came and talked to me, and that was the, the day that... My brothers and I had to make the decision whether or not to pull my dad off life support. Phil and you guys had been there with Noel, and Phil told me all the details behind that. I was a wreck and I didn't know what to do. And having Phil talk me through that for a long time and send me all kinds of messages and just kind of take me through that step by step made me be really at peace with the hardest decision I've ever had to make. I'm sorry you guys had to make that decision too. I'm sorry you've had to go through this twice. Um, but to Phil, Kate, and the entire Loving family, I want to thank you guys for being open and honest and sharing your stories and your struggles and the ongoing research that's happening that we can all support. Um, Darius and Violet, we want you guys to just know that your dad was an awesome and fun guy. I encourage you to strive to be a lot like your papa. I mean, mainly like your mom, but, but, a, li <laughs> but a little bit like your dad, too. Don't forget. <laughs> so I just wanted to lastly say, Phil, I want to thank you so much for, for being yourself and teaching me so much without even trying to teach me or be teachy about things. Your life, laughter, and love for people serve as a guide and an inspiration for me, for all of us here, and for all of our friends in Europe and beyond, who all reached out, devastated, but always with inspire, in, in, inspiring stories. Um, yeah, as Larry mentioned, all of them would, would, are just dying to be here and, and are, are crushed that they can't make it, but um, I just want to and I think Yannick will speak to it as well, but um, but just just know that you're you're loved by by everyone you came into contact with during during that year and in Europe and and all around the world. Um, 
So, lastly, just wanted to say what you said to me when my dad passed. May your memory be for blessing. And may we never lose the curiosity or ability to connect with others, to dance, and to laugh. Thank you. So, thank you for having me here. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, and all the speeches uh, that went before me uh, were beautiful and really gave me an insight into Phil's life that I actually uh, didn't have. So, but it all makes sense now. So, I was Phil's boss. And um, I think it's important, and I appreciate this opportunity because you all know Phil from a personal perspective, um, your family, your friends, your cousins. Um, but as I hope that this uh, event and the video from it uh, and the pictures from it live on, I think it's important for the kids. I think it's important for you all know, for you all to know. Um, a little part of Phil that is uh, maybe not spoken about that often, which is his professional life. So. Um, I met Phil for the first time, I believe, 2018, uh, right at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. And the reason why I met Phil was because he first worked uh, at the front office as an executive assistant uh, within our, uh, uh, for our director. Okay, so big deal stuff, uh, highly ranked people uh, in, the, in the Department of Defense. Um, and his contract was cut. So the contractor uh, at the time, uh, they cut the contract, they wanted to go in a different direction, and Phil was uh, potentially going to be out of work. However, our director uh, really appreciated him and loved him so much that uh, she created a position for him uh, as a government civilian um, to transition into. So that basically begins the part of the story where I meet Phil. Uh, what I do is uh, financial work, and that's the direction that he was being steered into. And uh, he came into my office. Um, really, you know, I didn't know anything about him. All I heard was, this kid's a great kid, and uh, not too much else. And I said, okay, you know, you give me a great kid, I can work with that. Okay. Uh, however, I joked with Phil early on because, uh, you know, I said, you know, you got a little bit of uh, Miley Cyrus in you because you came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta take this off. <laughs> I wasn't sure how that was gonna hit, so I got a little sweaty. So, um, <laughs> so uh, as soon as I met him, and you know, of course we, we joked, and as soon as I met him, I knew that uh, something was going to work out. I didn't know what, I didn't know um, exactly, you know, how well he would do professionally, but I certainly knew that um, he would learn, he would be hungry to learn, uh, he was driven. Um, you know, some of you said he was uh, extremely competitive, and he was, um, but really, really bright. So, uh, you know, I told him, look, Phil, I know that you don't know what you're doing right now, and, um, and that's okay, um, but you have to trust me, and you have to trust that this organization has your best interests at heart. And I think for Phil, that was a sense of comfort uh, where he could come to work feel that love, feel like we had our best interest, his best interest at heart. And from there, he was gonna you know, go to the moon. That's how driven he was, and that's how, that's how bright he was. Uh, so we'd work on things every day, you know, different things we'd work on together, you know, have a little chat sessions, things like that. Uh, but the most rewarding thing with Phil was everything you guys have talked about, which also um, you know, became evident in the work, uh, you know, in, in the office, which was uh, he could work the room, you know, he could, uh, if he didn't know the answer, he'd get it. He'd find it from somebody, you know, he'd squeeze it out of somebody, he'd call somebody who knew somebody. Um, and also his sense of humor, you know, which really helps in a, in a, in a workplace that's a high stress, uh, you know, high, op high operational tempo. And so, uh, you know, I, I know that he was a little tentative in the beginning. He didn't know, you know, he didn't know his bounds. He didn't know his boundaries, you know, things like that. And I said, Phil, you know, uh, I went to the school of uh, management from Michael Scott, 
okay, uh, <laughs> you know, from the office. You know, there's not a whole lot you can you you can't say here that I'm gonna uh, that I'm gonna look down on you uh, for. So he he loved that. So we'd uh, we'd get together, and, and at the end of the day, usually we'd you know we joke around a little bit. Uh, the 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 greatest thing about him in a professional setting was his on a daily basis I could see that he was learning and that he was gaining and that he was going to a place where we needed him to go and that was because of his combination of his smarts of his intellect of his you know wittiness which is also necessary in the in the professional workplace but he was extremely hard working and an example I give you is we had uh, one employee who was there a long time just was not doing well I I, I had to, I had to almost uh, cut the cord in a way and make a decision to say, this isn't working out. This isn't going well. I need to do something different, and gave Phil a really complicated portfolio to work on. Um, again, sort of not, uh, not really knowing <laughs> knowing anything about it, but I felt comfortable that he was going to work through it, and uh, I think that was one of his greatest uh, greatest skills. This was a really really uh, rewarding time. Uh, for me and for him and for us uh, as an office because it didn't last long and so there came a point where uh, we could see that he was uh, regressing a little bit and that's where that's where I think he and I had the most uh, uh, most connection uh, he would he would have um, seizures in the office um, and I'm familiar with seizures. I have a seizure disorder, so I'd say, Phil, you know, come into the office and we'll shake it up together, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but um, you know, and, and, and we'd help each other in that way. Um, but there came a point where he, um, he had to leave the office, and uh, we set him up to have everything at home as much as possible. Um, you know, with the telework uh, during a time where telework wasn't even like an acceptable thing. You know, uh, you know, we had to pull some strings to make it happen. But he was able to do some stuff from home, uh, and then eventually, you know, he had to kind of almost permanently uh, uh, be out. And during that time, I realized, uh, you know, how much we how much we actually missed him in the office. Um, Again, his just his general presence, uh, which you've all spoken to, um, is something that I still think about in the office. You know, I still I still feel uh, in the office. I still miss his uh, combination of his uh, you know relentlessness and, and hard work that he displayed and uh, ability, but you know that that sense of humor, that presence, that ability to. Um, you know, to, to work the room to find the answer, um, you know, I think was, was just priceless. You know, there would be times where I would have to go, I don't know, brief some uh, congressional committee or something, you know, whatever it is, and I said, Phil, can I bring you with me so you can uh, break the room a little bit in the beginning, you know? Uh, <laughs> those people are tough. Uh, <laughs> so he said, yeah, sure, I'll come along, you know, whatever. Uh, but, uh, you know, he was that fearless, too, um, that he would actually do it. You know, if I gave him some jokes to tell, he would actually do it, you know, so. Uh, uh, but I miss all of that, and um, I think about him every day, just like most of you do, and I know you all do. Um, you know, and I miss, uh, I miss at the end of the day where we used to uh, chat, and, you know, he'd take his tie off. I know he didn't like wearing a tie. You know, and I, th this is for him. You know, this open collar is for him today. <laughs> so I know, he, I know. Whenever he got a little tan, he'd like to, uh, you know, open it up a little. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a little, little showboat like that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but but uh, that's how I knew that. Uh, and and part of where, um, you know, in our office where where we have um, we, we we miss him so greatly. But part of my personal. Uh, Heartbreak is that um, I knew I wasn't just getting an employee. Um, we connected immediately, and I really, really was uh, knew I was getting a friend, and um, and that's part of uh, where my where my heart broke. Uh, you know, when when he passed. 
I also knew I was getting a friend in Kate. I knew I was getting uh, uh, going to have friends with the kids. You know, hopefully in the in the future. I hope I uh, I hope they see these videos and I hope they see these things and really uh, really appreciate what you all have done for them. Um, uh, but I miss my uh, work friend or my friend friend. I don't know whatever it is. You know, but I, I really miss him. And uh, you know, one of the special projects, and I have some props here. One of our special projects. Uh, that we had to have him do is actually to be the fire marshal uh, for our... <laughs> I know, it sounds ridiculous. Uh, to be the fire marshal uh, uh, for our division. And, uh, you know, it's somebody who's like the lead person for safety, you know. And uh, I was a little worried about the choice, but uh, you know, <laughs> it ended up working out because he was that thorough and he was that willing to, uh, to take it on and because he loved... Um, you know, he, he loved having the room too. So when he was, uh, when we was drill time, you know, hey, let's go, you know, and he'd lead us down the way. But uh, they, they gave him this uh, ridiculous hat and uh, he would wear it, you know. <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> when he went down, you, know, you could never miss, you know, our division, wherever we were in the parking lot to, uh, to gather. You know, you always knew where we were at because uh, Phil's wearing his uh, fire marshal's hat. You know, and I got his certificates in there too, so I wanted to hand this off to you at least uh, for you to have. I've been keeping it in the office. Uh, uh, so those are the things I, uh, I miss, and I know that our, um, that our directorate misses and that our agency misses uh, from him. Um, you know, at, at this point in time, you know, I know he would have risen to a level that, um, you know, certainly we would have all been uh, proud of him for and, and in the office would have been able to let him lead and, you know, portfolios independently and all the things that we have to do and that we're asked to do. So please understand that uh, your son and your, and your husband, uh, father and your friend, uh, family member, cousin, uh, was extremely hardworking, achieved uh, great things uh, in the workplace uh, for the amount of time that he was there, um, had buy-in from, from his boss and from, his, from our other bosses and from our colleagues that uh, this guy was going somewhere. Uh, it was just a matter of time, you know, combining the technical with the uh, kind of the, the, the personality, you know, and, and making sure that all works well together. Um, so I appreciate the time you guys gave me here. Um, I hope that this is a glimpse into a little bit into his uh, professional career. And um, I hope that uh, you all remember him the way I do, which is I think about him every single day when I walk into the office. I got a picture there. And it drives me too. So um, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Kate. Um, thank you, everybody.